What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Jurassic World Evolution. We're going to be continuing today with Claire's Sanctuary DLC. Last time we successfully rescued some, but not all, of the dinosaurs from uh, Isla Nublar. Um, the rest of them unfortunately got uh, engulfed by a volcanic eruption. Um, and so we've brought them here to the island of Sanctuary, where we're going to attempt to build them a new home. Um, the audio that I'm recording now is not the audio from when I was playing the game. Unfortunately that was lost, so uh, mostly I think I'll just leave the footage up as I can't bother to record the whole thing. I might chime in here and there with some bits and pieces if it seems a bit confusing what's happening on screen. Whose budget paid for this? <laughs> Not mine, I hope. We agreed that this would be different, Finch. That Sanctuary would be an island where the dinosaurs come first. Without question. I'm not asking any, Claire. None at all. Well, maybe one. How are you getting started? And when can we monetize it? That's two, I realize, but they are important questions. I have a plan in place. When can I see it? That's three questions, Finch. Open your eyes. It's already begun. So here's our objective. Mission one, prepare the park for the arrival of the rescued dinosaurs. The first three dinosaurs rescued from Nublar North will be arriving on Sanctuary soon. Prepare suitable enclosures as well as park facilities to see to their needs. The deaths of mission required dinosaurs or dinosaurs rescued from Nublar North will result in island failure. Right, I'm counting on your help. Choppers are bringing the first of the dinosaurs from Isla Nublar now. We need to get enclosures set up. Let's address all of their needs. The helicopters are inbound now, Claire. They'll be dropping off the dinosaurs on the island. I hope you have plans to get Sanctuary ready for them. Already on it, Finch. Whatever it takes. But not whatever it costs, please. <laughs> So I actually recorded this episode twice, because I had the same problem the first time round. Um, I thought I'd corrected the issue, came back to record it again, um, but turns out I didn't, hadn't, fixed the, hadn't fixed the right problem. Um, turns out I was, I was messing about with Elgato earlier, I was, I've got an Elgato capture card, um, so I installed the software, but it, it changed my input settings for some reason, I'm not sure why it did. But it turns out that was what, what the problem was. Um, but I didn't realise until after I recorded this one. Um, but the first island, the first attempt was a bit of a shambles actually. So I was kind of uh, glad to get a second opportunity um, to try and keep things a bit more organised, a bit more laid out correctly, as it was, it was a nightmare the first time I promised. Um, so it might seem like I uh, know what's going to happen, and that's because I do. So when it came to building the enclosures for the first three dinosaurs, I actually did correctly remember what the first three dinosaurs I shipped off the island were. It was the Baryonyx, the Albertosaurus, and the Stegosaurus. 
Although, the first time around, I didn't know that they were going to necessarily come in that order. But when they did, then that was confirmed. And then the second attempt on this island that you're seeing now, uh, I obviously knew exactly what was coming. So I was able to prepare um, with the knowledge of what was turning up. did spend a lot of time faffing around, smoothing out the terrain and making sure everything was nice and even, because the first time I came to this island, it was just a, a wibbly wobbly mess, because everything kept building at, at funny angles and the terrain was all over the place, so I was making a more uh, dedicated effort to keep everything smoothed out this time around. First, dinosaurs are almost here. Let's make sure they find a way to their new homes. Thank goodness for GPS, right? <laughs> So one thing that I learned here from my first attempt to the island is that I was able to build one of these creation labs. Um, first time round, for some reason I just assumed that I wouldn't be able to for a while, um, as I would be stuck with what was being shipped in, so I didn't even think to look really. But uh, knowing that the Stegosaurus got lonely, it um, became difficult later on to maintain their comfort rating. So because you have to make you have to make friends for them to hang out with. So this time around I tried to uh, get ahead of that early by building this creation lab. Although actually at this point you see I counted uh, the wrong number of zeros. Uh, so I decided against it thinking that it was going to use up most of my money um, because I mistook 4 million uh, for 400,000 and so I thought oh that's a bit expensive. I'll come back to that. plenty of these viewing platforms because I thought it was very important to ensure a high level of visibility to make sure we were getting visitors to come in to fund the continued improvement of the park.
collection. Just checking that all the dinosaurs are comfortable in their enclosures. We know that the Stegosaurus isn't going to be comfortable because he needs a larger social group, so we're going to have to deal with him being a bit sulky for a while. The next batch of dinosaurs are inbound. So now we're going to be expecting a Brachiosaurus and a Triceratops, so we've got to prepare some enclosures for them. Brachiosaurus needs a lot of trees, but not quite that many.
And here we're going to start breeding the Stegosaurus some friends to play with. Although I did notice that the genome is only 50% complete in Claire's campaign, so I ummed and ahed a bit over it and eventually uh, decided to take the risk at the 50%. Eventually. Here you see the Stegosaurus starting to get fed up of being an enclosure on its own, so it's starting to try and break out. And that was a nice reminder that we needed to have some shelters. Sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle when you've got too much space to work with, deciding where to start. Asset has been collected. There's no real clear defined plan at this point of where this path's going to go, but I thought we'd just keep building it and see where it takes us.
So far, so good. Now to ensure our new arrivals are comfortable in their enclosures. So this is where that Stegosaurus becomes a bit of a pain because he won't be comfortable until he's got uh, a social group of five. So that means we've got to you know, give him four new playmates, um, which means Adding we can't progress the mission until they're all completed. And you can see that until he's got those playmates, he's going to just be trying to escape the whole time, which is very frustrating. choices. It's not really the end of the world because we can just breed more, but it was a bit of a pain for the, the very beginning of this mission. Here I was talking about that when re-watching the Jurassic World films recently, I started to recognise the buildings in the park in the movie um, that the ones in the game are based on, which is something that you know most people probably wouldn't <laughs> have any interest in. But for me, uh, you know, a nerdy uh, Jurassic Park evolution player, I was like, oh, that's the that's the toilet from the game. So next time you're watching Jurassic World, keep an eye out for this toilet building because it's quite easy to spot. And then you can be like, oh, that's the one from the game. Adding task. And your long winter evenings will just fly by.
here I was trying to work out if it would be possible to squeeze two power stations in here to make the most of it, but I couldn't, couldn't get them both to fit, I don't think. We're really just waiting for those Stegosaurus at this point, so we're just looking for ways to kill time until they can pop out and we can progress the mission. Here I'm talking about plans to squeeze a hotel into this bit of open land we've got here, because I've actually built the park quite spaciously, which is unusual for me, so I've got a lot of land to work with. Um, but not that many buildings unlocked at this point, so uh, that's typical, but oh well. Our fifth Stegosaurus, so they should all start to cheer up a bit now. Collecting assets. We didn't need to, but we thought we'd just give the Triceratops a friend. Here I'm just talking about the gift shop being another building that you can recognise in the movies if you pay attention. Asset has been delivered. So we're just playing the waiting game, waiting for that Stegosaurus comfort level to tick above 80.
Because of us, the dinosaurs have a new home. Welcome to Sanctuary. Well, well, well. Look at what you've done. Never a doubt in my mind. <laughs> really? Correct. <laughs> I never doubted you'd fail. But I'm glad, obviously, that you didn't. Either way, I kind of feel like I was winning. So, color me surprised. <laughs> and who doesn't like a surprise? We don't like surprises. Discovery, then. We like those, right? Y yes discoveries that's what we're about so that's mission accomplished our priority on sanctuary should be the dinosaurs first everything else is secondary part of that focus will be on the welfare of these animals specifically their nutrition. Together, we are going to reintroduce them to prehistoric plant life. So next mission then is to research, incubate and release a Euoplocephalus with a rating of at least 65. Claire says, don't ask how, but we've managed to acquire some info pertaining to the acquisition of a new species, a Euoplocephalus. Research the dinosaur, acquire its genome and incubate a specimen. Let's make it the best it can be. The deaths of mission required dinosaurs or dinosaurs rescued from Nublar North will result in island failure. With our new island comes new dinosaurs. Specifically, we are going to research and incubate a Euoplocephalus. Start by getting fossil and genome data. I see you're looking to introduce new dinosaurs to Sanctuary. A Euoplocephalus. There's a mouthful, huh? Fortunately, it looks like a herbivore, so shouldn't be any of its mouth full of me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this episode. We've accomplished our mission, and we're going to call that it. Um, I apologise for the issues with the audio. Uh, it might be a little bit out of balance, actually, during this video, because um, I don't have any way to adjust the game volume. Normally, when I record, it's set to automatically dim the, the volume from the game but because it wasn't picking up my microphone, it doesn't seem to have done that. So there might have been points where the game was quite loud and I wasn't really loud enough, but uh, not a lot I can do about it at the moment, so I can only apologise and say things should be back to normal for the next episode. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.